guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here i'm anna and i'm a little bit spooky and today we are going to be reviewing and wear testing the wet n wild bare focus tinted hydrator and seeing how it holds up on a very hot humid yucky day here in louisiana on my normal skin kind of normal middle road skin at the moment we'll see how it holds up we're going to go over all the claims i'm going to demo applying it with a sponge brush and then wear it for as long as i can today and see how it holds up. All right, if that interests you, just go ahead and keep on watching and let me know down below if there's any more of these little uh, foundations that you're interested in. I really enjoy reviewing foundations, so let me know any you're interested in down below in the comments. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into the demo and the claims and all that jazz. On to the makeup. All right, guys, hello, good morning. We're testing out, well, I've been testing out, so we're reviewing the <laughs> Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator today. And I'm gonna demo it and we're gonna do a wear test. And today is kind of a busy day. I'm working at a benefit, um, preparing food plates for plate lunches. And it's incredibly hot and humid here in Louisiana, as per huge, but I feel like this year is just particularly on one with the heat, like we're like, 105 heat index with like 91 percent humidity it's just so fun and it's been super like wet and rainy yet incredibly steamy and hot it's basically a sauna here in louisiana so yeah this is going to get a good test <laughs> what i'm going to do is going to apply half of it with a brush half of the sponge so you can just see the differences and go over the claims. I'm gonna actually read you the claims real quick and have them on the screen as well. This is the Wet n Wild Bare Focus Tinted Hydrator Tinted Skin Veil. <laughs> is that really? Yeah, it says tinted twice. I feel that's redundant. I've got a few qualms with some stuff that they say. This retails for $6.49 on the Wet n Wild website. It says it has buildable coverage and it says here, watch the imperfections fade away. Features buildable seamless coverage for sheer to medium. It's intensely hydrating. Recommended for normal to dry skin. I have combo skin. It can be a little bit dry. It's pretty balanced at the moment. Like I'm doing really good with my skin where it's not oily. It's not dry. It's just nice middle ground, good, good stuff. But sometimes I can be incredibly oily. Sometimes I can be really dry. So we'll see. Right now I'm just a very middle of the road, balanced, normal skin. So I'm kind of shocked at that. It says it's lightweight and nourishing with a semi-matte finish, yet they also say it has a natural glow that gives you a radiant complexion. So which is it? Is it semi-matte or glowy? They, they, they seem to want to claim both. <laughs> I don't think it is semi-matte. Personally, I think it is quite glowy in my experience thus far. Like I find this to be a pretty glowy product. It's not like uber uber dewy shiny but it, it's definitely very hydrated looking healthy skin looking but i wouldn't call it i wouldn't use the word matte to describe it at all but maybe if you have drier skin it might would appear a little more matte perhaps it comes in 11 what they call versatile shades now to me this is does have a bit more coverage than i anticipated so um the deepest shade does not run very deep like it's a bronzer shade for me is what it looks like so it's definitely kind of lacking in the shade range and they're trying to use that that it's sheer as an excuse for the shitty range but to me this product has enough coverage where you need more shades i do think there are some products say for instance like this milani glow hydrating skin tint that you can definitely get away with only having the two shades because it is so incredibly sheer it's basically just a it has almost no coverage yeah okay you know that's one thing it has the two shades but this to me has very nice and buildable coverage they, they could use some more shades on the deeper end of the spectrum for sure i have the shade fair which is the second to lightest shade and it actually matches me with self tanner fairly well um it it's not the lightest shade in the world and it has a bit of a warm i wouldn't say orangey but definitely a warmer undertone uh, I just didn't see porcelain in store, but I'm happy with the shade I got because it is a versatile shade for me, as in I can wear it with my self tan and wear it without, and it just kind of works depending what concealer powder I pair with it. The, the shade, range of, shade range is just a little bit lacking considering this is a product that is buildable. Now, if this was just purely a sheer product, I would be fine with that, but this is one you do get a surprising amount of coverage from. 
like it's a strong light medium coverage i was i was very surprised i was expecting it to be much more sheer and of course depending on your application method is the level of coverage you're going to get obviously you know with a brush you're going to get more coverage with a sponge you might get a little less coverage you can do your fingers it's a very easy product to work with and i do like that it is quite moisturizing and hydrating i'm really into these types of products and I think this one is really comparable to like any other one you find at the drugstore, possibly even a good dupe for the Beautiful Skin by Charlotte Tilbury. It's very similar type of product. It's, it's similar to like the Bare Minerals Glow CC cream that I covered earlier, except it doesn't have the pearly finish to it. This is truly just like a good hydrated skin skincare glow. It's not a pearlized finish necessarily. I don't believe. I haven't noticed it being that way anyway. But yeah, it also claims to have um, squalane and hyaluronic acid. It says that it is non-greasy, which I think it, it isn't greasy. It is very much just um, on par with like the number seven Protect and Perfect, the Age Perfect Serum Foundations. Um, any of these that come in the tube, they, they're kind of not too dissimilar. There may be like some small differences within like the finish or something, but they're for the most part, fairly similar products. Um, this one is, I think, a really good one though. Despite the shade range sucking, I've enjoyed this product. Now today, I don't have any primer on. We're not gonna put any primer. We're not gonna give it any extra help. <laughs> I've kind of gotten away from wearing like primer constantly also. And for skincare, I've actually just done some of my Polish Choice Niacinamide, a little bit of my Origins Eye Cream, um, Derma E Vitamin C Lotion, and then some of the Dermalogica Skin Recovery SPF 50. This does not have an SPF in it, which I don't think you should rely on your foundation for your SPF. That's a no-no. Always use a separate SPF that is a nice level. I recommend SPF 45 and up. 30, I guess. 30 seems to be the most common that you can find, but I'm, I'm an SPF 50 kind of gal. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive in with this product. I'm gonna do start with a brush on this side of the face and I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Ultimate Blending, which is my favorite foundation brush at the moment. And I'm just gonna square a little out. It does have like some glow to it when I sheared out. It's not a super pearlized finish, but it does have a little bit of a glow. I think, yeah, it does have a little bit of a sheen in there, but it's not super strong. I would say it's similar in sheen level to like the L'Oreal True Match Hyaluronic Serum. It has that little bit of a glowy sheen in there. This has that, but it's very subtle. It's more subtle than the It Cosmetics CC, which CC Glow Tint or whatever it's called. It, that one has a lot more of a sheen to it. But this one's, it's very pretty on the skin. I do think it kind of disguises imperfections. It, it It's very soft focus looking. So I'm gonna take a little bit on the brush and you can see this is what we're working with right now. I'll go ahead and start to apply. And you see there's a decent amount of coverage out the gate. Like as I sheared it out, I could just do a little quick buff and get a very sheer application, which I think nine times out of 10, if you're using a, a tinted product, you're wanting a little more coverage in certain areas. And that's why I think the shade range does need to be a little bit more expanded on because you know, on my cheeks or somewhere, I'm gonna wanna build a little more coverage in these areas. You know, you don't want it to not match you where you build up and look obvious that you've built product in that certain area and see a difference. If they weren't claiming that it was buildable, I feel like they could have probably gotten away with it, but the fact that it's buildable, I, I'm gonna nitpick about that, okay? But here we are, just a light application. I mean, just super quick. And you see the coverage level is pretty good. And it is matching my self-tanner shade, which is on my neck pretty well. It has knocked down the redness. I can still see a few freckles through, but overall, I think that's beautiful coverage. You know, this does look a lot like the It Cosmetics I keep mentioning it. I need to pull it out so I can get the name right. CC Nude Glow. Very similar to this, except it doesn't have the SPF. But it does have that kind of sheen in it. I think it may be not quite as strong a sheen, but it's still there. Hit around the forehead here. I do think a brush applies this really well. I think it's, it's a very quick, easy product to apply. That's why I love these types of foundations and skin tints and moisturizer, tinted moisturizer situations, they're just so damn fast. I mean, and you just don't have to really think too hard about it to apply them. So here we are with one layer. I'm gonna build a little bit right in here where I do have some redness. So I'm gonna go back in and just pat a little more right in that area. 
And to me, like, if, imagine if this didn't match me, <laughs> I would not be happy with that, not being able to build it with it looking obvious, you know? But yeah, look, probably buildable, but it's very buildable. Like, redness is gone. I can just see my little freckles and sunspots coming through, which doesn't bother me one bit. I actually think that's very pretty when you have a little bit of freckling coming through. I think it just makes it look like you're uh, more of a no makeup makeup vibe and you just have pretty skin, you know? As someone who is, I'm very fair naturally and I have a lot of redness in my skin. I have a little bit of rosacea. I get high V. I I get kind of allergic skin, kind of eczema prone skin. So I tend to get a little bit of irritation sometimes in my cheeks and yeah, I think that looks really good. Now for this being the fair shade, I got some qualms with that. Because this is my self-tanner shade. I should not be buying anything that says fair when it's to match my self-tanner. <laughs> I want to be a medium. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. This will give you definitely, a um, if you're a ghost like myself, like, if you're very, very pale, go down to, like, maybe the porcelain shade. Because the fair shade, to me, has a bit more depth level than what I would use without self-tanner. It's, it would be a little deep on me and I would have to shear it out a little more. Okay, so here's the one side with the brush. Really nice coverage. It looks really pretty on the skin. Very soft focus yet glowy. Like there's nothing here that says semi-matte to me. Like it, there's definite glow, right? And just it looks healthy. It looks hydrated. I do really enjoy that. The pore area doesn't look emphasized, like texture is not emphasized. It looks glowy, yet my pores do look a little bit more just filtered on this side as opposed to this side. Like it, it's not, definitely not exacerbating or emphasizing texture by any means. It's, it's blurring slightly. It's almost like this has a little bit of a primer vibe to it, which is very pretty. And in that respect, quite similar to, um, the number seven restore and renew with that kind of blurring or that kind of little bit perfecting look to it and like the positive light from rare beauty very comparable in finish just a little bit possibly a little more glowy and having that little bit of sheen in it but it's a very subtle sheen but i really don't get where they're calling this semi matte girl that ain't semi matte that's glowy that's glowy let's try it out with the sponge now on this side and i'm gonna use my pawpaw sponge that is dampened just because that's the one I got out today, and I love that sponge. Yeah, this definitely does have a little bit of a pearl sheen in it, but it's not strong. But I can see it just ever so slightly when the light hits a certain way. Oh, and you also are getting less than a fluid ounce in here. You're getting 0.91 fluid ounces. Why not just give you the full fucking ounce? But again, the price point is pretty damn good for $6. And that's depending where you shop. You could probably get it cheaper at Walmart. Okay, so let's go in with the sponge. And this is definitely going to give a little bit of a sheer application, of course. Yeah, way sheer. More sheer on that side. Um, basically no coverage with a sponge. So I definitely would not apply this one with a sponge. Some of these products, I think, benefit from sponges. But a lot of these skin tints don't. Unless you just really want light, light coverage. See, that? that is basically nothing. <laughs> when it shears out. So I would much prefer the brush. So I'm going to go over that side with a brush. I just wanted to show you initially, you know, just to give you an idea of what it would do. All right, let me go ahead and fix that. But here's a look of brush versus sponge. I don't see it being particularly buildable with a sponge and it's just absorbing a lot of the product. You can build a little bit. I just, I think the the brush is a lot better. I also think this oxidizes just a tad as well. Can you see the difference? Like it looks a little bit deeper on this side where I've applied it. It is oxidizing. Maybe going about half a shade up. Yeah, I, I don't like it with a sponge. That's really not the way to go. So I'm gonna go back in with my brush because I just soaked up product and just a little too sheer. Like you can still see that red mark on my face. We're gonna brush it. <laughs> also, I feel like the brush is just so much quicker. And this isn't like a massive brush, but look how fast I can just buff this in. I kind of pounce around the cheek area, anywhere I want more coverage. And as I get down towards the neck, I kind of, I buff. But yeah, there is a definitely some oxidization happening. Okay, now we get everything evened out. Very pretty. That is a beautiful finish. This is a pretty product. If you were interested in the 
All right, that looks nice. It looks nice, huh? I like this foundation. I think it's pretty. It looks very pretty on the skin. So we'll see how it wears throughout the day. I'm gonna go ahead and pop, pop on a little bit of concealer. I'm just gonna use my Age Perfect Radiant Concealer around the eye area. But you see, I did get a decent amount of coverage around the eyes. I just like to kind of brighten up right here because I do get a little shadowiness just from the shape of my face. <laughs> and a little right here. I've already put eye primer on, so that's why I'm not getting around my eyes, like eyelids. All right, and I'm just gonna pat that out like I would normally. Also, I'm not noticing any streakiness when using the brush. It's applying very, almost airbrushed. Airbrushed and glowy. This is a pretty impressive skin tint, especially for the price point. I think this is a really, a really good product. Like, I, the hype is real. I kept seeing people talking about it and I just didn't, wasn't that drawn to it because I'm like, ah, it's just another skin tint. I don't, I don't know. Even though I've enjoyed every complexion product that Wet n Wild's put out, they kill it in the foundation department as far as like their finishes and stuff. They do really good foundation and concealers. So I don't know why I was doubting it. I do want to try out their new little powder, their new press powder that they've just come out with. I don't know why I didn't pick it up when I picked this up. I why do I do that? <laughs> I end up having to go back and get stuff. But here we are. All right, I'm gonna do a little powder. I'm gonna use my control powder, which is the number seven triple action lift and illuminate. This is a powder that I know how it performs really well. And I'm somebody who does need to powder their T-zone. I get quite oily in that region, especially around my mouth. Um, so I always sit down with a little bit of powder. I'm going to take it on my sponge here and just press right where I need it. Actually, I'm gonna do that on a dry sponge. I don't like doing it with a wet sponge. <laughs> I'm gonna press right in here. This is the cookies and cream sponge. And just pressing where I need a little bit. I don't wanna look super glowy because then you just get that oily, sweaty look, you know? I like the rest of the face to be glowy. I just don't want my chin and my next to my nose like right in here being oily. I don't mind the top of my nose being shiny though. It's just an odd thing. And I always have to sit around my under eye, like right here. Not so much because my concealer will crease, but because my mascara will transfer down. Because <laughs> my lashes touch my fat little cheeks when I squint and I constantly squint. And I always pat a little powder through the brow. And that did matte it down quite a bit, but it's not gonna stay super matte. <laughs> The oil will eventually kind of break through throughout the day. I just like that one area to be nice and set. And then I'll just take like a loosey goosey brush or just a big powder brush and just pat down over the rest just to set it. But if you're not worried about longevity necessarily or getting a little oily throughout the day, I think this is one you could probably get away without setting and be fine. That's just a personal preference. I, I like my foundation set down just a bit. And now this is what I call a soft matte finish or semi matte. <laughs> so I can still see some glow coming through. But yeah, I think that looks good. It looks good right now. So what we do is go ahead and finish up the rest of my face and I'll come back and show you what it looks like with the makeup all done. And we'll go over a few little thoughts and I'll be doing some check-ins.
Hey guys, it is currently 9 a.m. So we will see how long this makeup holds up. So far, I think things look really good. Um, yes, set T-zone area, a little bit of highlighter on the cheeks, so that's what that glow is. And we'll just see how things progress throughout the day. Uh, like I said, it's gonna be a busy, hot, <sighs> humid day. So even if I am indoors, it's still humid. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my lipsticks and stuff in my bag and put my pants on and get my day started, get out the door. So I'll see you guys in a little while and we'll do a little check-in and some final thoughts and round this little review right on up. So yeah, All right, hey guys, we're in some natural sunlight here. Um, so the skin is looking really good. It's 5 p.m. by the way. I just have a little wear on my chin where I was sitting like this, and a little wear on my nose because my nose was itching, and I'm a little dewy, like right in here, but not that a little powder couldn't fix. Like otherwise, I think it's held up really well. <laughs> and yes, it is scorching hot today. But yeah, I'm trying to show you in the sun. Like to me, this is a pretty finish, just a like if this is what it looked like when I first put it on. Not bad, again, I have just a little wear right here, just, we were eating and stuff, you know, and you wipe your mouth, and talking and sitting like that. But yeah, I think we were holding up pretty, pretty good. So awesome. I'll check in again before I wash my face this evening. I do feel a little, like, kind of sticky, just where I touched, but I didn't do any setting spray, by the way, or anything like that, just the number seven powder through the T-zone. But I think it looks really good everywhere else. Heck yeah. Alright, so I will check in tonight for bed.